Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today, we're gonna do a quick little tip video on how to facilitate removing transistors, MOSFETs, IGBTs, what have you. We're looking at a BMW uh, DME here, and uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove any heat sink from it. So, um, obviously, heat sinks are very efficient. They do, they'll soak up all that heat and dissipate it and leave you burning up your circuit board. And in my practicing, uh, I've burnt many a circuit board. And um, you're gonna wanna avoid doing that. So you, it may take, uh, it may require you to remove it from, um, remove the heatsink from the circuit board. In this case, we've already done that. And uh, the one that, the IGBT that we're looking at today is a big one. Uh, but if you're able to do this one, you're more than likely gonna be able to do all the little ones as well. Uh, that's the one we're looking at right now, but we do have other ones, smaller ones right here. We have the tiny uh, MOSFETs there. I believe that's a MOSFET. And we got the regular, typically, the very typical size for in injector driver circuits and uh, in ignition driver circuits. But we're going to go for the big boy. I figured, why not, right? I have personally have never done one of these using a soldering iron, by the way. This video is for... Those who don't have a rework station, ideally you would like to use an, uh, a rework station, um, like the one that I use. I use the A10 ST A62D. I'm not, you know, I don't get anything from sharing that. That's just what I use. It's the best bang for the buck, in my opinion, uh, I'm, and I'm a huge fan of it, and it served me well. But in this video is for those who don't have rework stations yet, and um, all you've got is a soldering iron. And personally, I've never done one of these big ones with just a soldering iron, so. We're gonna learn this one together. And that goes, what goes without saying is, I am not a 20 year veteran doing this stuff. I am learning every single day and uh, just sharing what I learned. In this case, we have a resistor on top of it. We may need to remove that, but we're gonna try not to. Uh, but if, it, if we need to, we will. Uh, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is add some flux. Don't be scared of it. Just put some in there. It doesn't hurt you. And what I do personally is add more solder, um, which seems counterintuitive, but that helps lower the melting point of this uh, solder here. And obviously you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your extraction fan on, you know, safety third, right? So do not breathe this stuff, stuff in if you can help it. So I'm just sliding it. I'm using a an angled iron. And this, this solder is tough. They use some serious stuff on here. They do a very well, good job of uh, applying this solder. So it's, it looks like it's giving me a hard time just to get it in there. But it's going. You want it to mix well with whatever's down there already. So I have my iron set at 390 celsius that may not be enough for this particular job so like i said i'm learning daily they're starting to mix in pretty well we're going to do the same things with these ones up here keep everything as hot as possible um all at the same time you don't want all of this stuff to cool down while you're working on it so and <clears throat> i had forgot my pliers so this is not gonna be easy, I'll tell you right now, it's not gonna be easy. These two legs I'm not too worried about, it's this bottom one that's really got a lot going on right now. It is not easy, this is why you should be using a rework station. See if we have any success doing this. You may need to use low melt solder. I that's not the solder that I put. I, I put regular. On, um, of course, the name escapes me now. Come on. It's loosening up. You saw that movement? Ideally, like I said, you want a rework station. 
we're just gonna lift it slightly. I know that's cheating, but there it is. We have removed it. A lot of people won't like that I bent the pins there, but you know what? This is a huge MOSFET and it's very well installed. So sometimes you gotta get the job done. All you got is a soldering iron. You don't have a rework station. I mean, you gotta get the job done. So we'll figure out how we put the, these pins back on if you decide to uh, reinstall it somewhere. Let's say this is a donor module and you wanna reinstall this IGBT on a different board. We could just do the following. Let's say this is your new board and you wanna take your uh, donor chip and install it onto this board well you're gonna want to clear a lot of this that's going on down here so for that we're gonna need the braid and I'm just, I've got a my braid has already been used up a bit so I'm just gonna cut off the tip actually that's the wrong braid we've got our new braid here and I'm just gonna remove all this stuff here I want to focus first on getting the the main chunk on first this big boy right here instead of the pins first so well, that's my that's my technique on it i remove i worry about the pins last in every case uh, you could do this this isn't entirely optional I'm, i should probably put some more flux on here but i you could leave that as is but i like to put brand new solder when I'm working on there you may want to remove the solder that's on the chip that is entirely up to you but it'll work so this is so that the pins can lay flat but we won't have to worry about that till later so since we're just cleaning up a little this is what we're doing right here I'm gonna add some more flux and some solder. Um, this this video really came about because a, a friend of mine was talking about rework, and uh, one of his buddies said, "Hey, you got any tips for removing MOSFETs?" And uh, so you know what? Let me see if I can make a video on this. So we're pre-tinning here, right? We're gonna grab our chip and put it somewhere in the position where it should be and ideally you want to heat up both at the same time unfortunately this is all the access that we have this we don't have a way to get underneath there so this is all we've got so we're going to want to push down on our chip while we heat up just like we did before make sure it's nice and flat you're going to need to look at it from the sides And I should have probably put more flux. You saw that movement? You see the liquid? That shows that we are flat now. So we could pretty much let that. And I do apologize for the noise. My brother's working on a sprinter engine over there. You can let that cool down right there. Now, since we had solder on these pins, you're not going to want to bend them back like that without using heat. So I used the soldering iron. <laughs> Some people are going to kill me for this, but I use the soldering iron um, in order to bend those back. Because if you do it without heat, I mean, that's solder that you're also trying to bend. And that's just, I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. Now, you can reinforce this big boy right here. I don't feel like thinking about all the names right now. I'm just trying to make a super quick video in order to help somebody out. But while, while we're at it, might as well share it with you guys. Put some of that in there. Since it's a big piece of metal, I mean, you may want to raise your temperature, but you know what? We're doing it. We're winging this one. So we got that a little reinforced. Now we're going to bring this pin down. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Ideally, you will want it flat. So you may want to push that in there. Of course, that's not good for your soldering iron, but you know what? this thing is resilient and we are just about done we're gonna hit this thing with alcohol and if you could do this I think you could do any MOSFET that comes your way and I tried to pick the one that was not so easy either so give that a good scrub 
We're gonna use our Kintec wipes. They're supposed to be, whoa, sorry. They're supposed to be lintless or cloth free or whatever you wanna call it. And we still got a ways to go. Sometimes I like to use my toothbrush. The one I used, you know, I brush my teeth, come to work, use it here, and then take it back home. I'm just kidding. You can't kid around these days you know, on YouTube. You gotta be careful what you say nowadays because somebody will do it. So yeah, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't try this at home. Um, I will take the time to clean this up much further because I'm not going to release this. Um, sometimes I'm tempted to just um, stop the video here and, and call it a day but you know then people get the wrong idea they think that I'm gonna release it like this we could use one of these to help but I will be continuing my cleaning after this is a bad board by the way so these are all gonna be donor parts but you are gonna want to clean that up because well it's craftsmanship you know there's there's workmanship involved here there's pride so <laughs> coming from a guy that just bent some pins and stuff um, I hope this was helpful I hope this these tips helped you uh, succeed in changing out a MOSFET or an IGBT using a soldering iron you may not have a real workstation I would consider I would suggest that you consider getting one if you don't um, it is a huge difference I could literally show you uh, what a difference it makes let's you know what let's go ahead and show that we're gonna do a rework station versus soldering iron video I'm gonna try my best not to get this resistor removed uh, let me make sure that we are in focus here and I'm gonna set my temperature at 420 degrees Celsius you know what might as well knock this one out of the park um, let me go ahead and grab my tweezers and we're gonna get right to it We're not even pre-tinning anything. We're just going straight for the kill here. And you want to evenly apply this heat without removing that resistor and blowing it away. And you'll see the you'll see when it flows. You'll see it get nice and shiny. Like I said, you do not want to use a, uh, when the heat sink is installed, you do not want to do that. Sometimes I like to tap this and make sure it's already flowing. We're getting close. Patience is key. You do not want to rip this thing off. Bam. Just like that, fellas. And to reinstall. Ideally, you may want to flatten it like we did the first time, but you can do this as well. And cavitation will do its job here. So the solder will kind of like grip it. You see that flow? And then you just want to push down and make sure it's nice and flat. And you may want to clean it up. You may want to make it look better than that after you're done. You know, this is just a super quick tutorial. We are no longer flowing here. You may want to clean it up with a soldering iron, but look at look at how much work you save. I hope if, if you're on the fence about a rework station, I hope this changes your mind because I was at first um, terrified of getting a rework station just just because I thought I would burn the crap out of everything. I would destroy everything in sight. And during my practicing phase, which I practice all the time, um, I did burn a lot of stuff. But, you know, you, you get a sense for it. You get a feel for it. Um, you get, it gets easier. Now, of course, like I said, I'm not a 20-year pro doing this. I'm an automotive technician that has taken the time to start learning this stuff. And it's been like a year or two max. So... Take what I say with a grain of salt, uh, confirm, corroborate any information that I'm giving you, and, and decide for yourself which way is best for you. But all in all, I 
hope you all appreciate this video. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, consider subscribing if you like what you see, if you want to see more of this kind of content. And uh, don't forget to hit like, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.